the presentation should be uh, now visible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, good morning. Uh, I would like to show uh, what the uh, game of life is, uh, how interesting it can be, and uh, how I, with uh, Dr. Pomorski, uh, created a stochastic equivalent of the uh, game of life. Uh, I will present the uh, results that uh, we obtained uh, by uh, carrying out the simulations and uh, show our mm, attempt to describe this simulator uh, thermodynamic. Uh, we have to start with uh, what the classic Conway game of life is. So it is a cellular automaton uh, devised by a British mathematician, uh, John Conway. Uh, this simulator consists of cells uh, that are uh, located on a two-dimensional lattice. Uh, these cells uh, can be in one of two states. They can be uh, alive or dead. Uh, most often, uh, living cells are uh, marked with a color. Uh, the simulation takes uh, place in cycles. And uh, in each such cycle, the rules uh, of the game are uh, checked for uh, each cell on the board. Uh, there are uh, three main rules. Uh, the first is about uh, living cells. And it says that if a live cell uh, has two or three neighbors, uh, that cell uh, stays alive. Uh, in other words, it survives. Uh, another rule uh, describes the uh, behavior of a dead cell, which with a certain number of uh, neighbors, uh, uh, equal to three comes alive, uh, so it changes its state to life. And uh, the last rule applies to all other cells that uh, either die or uh, remain dead. As we can see, the rules of the classic game of life uh, are uh, fully deterministic. Uh, the rules uh, defined in this way uh, allow for the construction of uh, various types of structures. Uh, the first are uh, unstable structures that uh, change uh, in uh, successive cycles, but uh, do not return to their uh, initial state. Uh, still lives are structures that uh, look the same in the next generations uh, because they never change uh, their shape. An example is the square that is shown on the slide. Oscillators uh, are structures in which uh, the cells that compose them uh, change in the next cycles. And what makes them different from uh, the unstable structures is that they uh, return to their original shape after a certain uh, number of cycles. Uh, oscillators change periodically, and the uh, simplest such uh, structure is a blinker, which is made up of uh, three cells arranged in uh, a row or a column. Uh, it does not have to be that uh, entire structures uh, cannot move. Uh, we have spaceships uh, which uh, travel across the board, and uh, one of the examples of this is a glider that uh, can be observed on the screen. Uh, we can combine uh, several structures with each other. And uh, when we uh, do that, uh, we obtain the guns that uh, consist of an oscillator that uh, shoots uh, spaceships. The most spectacular uh, videos uh, of the game of life or Conway game of life in action uh, consists of uh, numerous guns firing uh, all over uh, the map. The classic game of life is uh, too perfect, uh, unheard of in nature. In order to make this simulator uh, real, uh, we need to add some kind of uh, probability. The stochastic game of life has uh, three main rules. A life cell that has two or three neighbors now may but not have to survive. We draw a number for uh, each cell and uh, compare it to the uh, 
predetermined probability. Uh, the same is in the case of a dead cell. Uh, if it has uh, three neighbors, it can come back to life with a given probability. If we were to repeat the measurement for a given structure many times, uh, the final result uh, would not be the same. Any other cell that has at least one neighbor uh, has a certain probability uh, to change its state to uh, be or alive uh, or dead. And uh, in this rule, uh, there is an obligation uh, to have at least one neighbor uh, to prevent life cells from uh, forming uh, in places where there are uh, no living cells, as uh, this would cause some kind of chaos. Uh, cells would appear in random places and then uh, disappear, disappear in the uh, next cycle. Having such uh, defined rules, uh, we are able, uh, able to carry out some measurements. Uh, note that in the stochastic Conway game of life, the steel structures are uh, not steel. The oscillators uh, don't return to their um, initial shapes. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to measure several things. First, uh, we need to establish uh, what we consider to be the death of the population. So this is the situation where uh, there are no living cells on the board. The population, therefore the initial structure, uh, can be tested in terms of the, for example, uh, life expectancy of the population on the board. Uh, we can uh, measure also how long specific cells or populations were alive, uh, describe uh, the situation on the board uh, in the next cycles, uh, count uh, how often there was a live cell in a given field. Measurements uh, for these uh, tests were made on a 10 by 10 board with the uh, initial square structure two by two. Uh, the graph uh, shows the population uh, life average for uh, different uh, probabilities. The horizontal axis show the level probability and the uh, vertical axis shows the cycle in which the population died. For a probability of 100, uh, there is full determinism because it is a situation of classic game of life. As the probability uh, decreases, the life expectancy uh, of the population uh, decreases because uh, the cells uh, now may not survive. From around 98%, uh, uh, the average life uh, expectancy uh, begins uh, to rise and below 85%, I think, uh, the population practically uh, never dies. Instead, they uh, spread all over the lattice. It's time to introduce uh, the last rule of the stochastic uh, game of life. Cells do not have to be either alive or dead. Uh, they can live with a certain amount of life, which we call mass. In that case, we have uh, to change the rules again because uh, such a cell will almost never have exactly uh, two or three neighbors. We need to set uh, a certain range, for example, from uh, one half of a neighbor uh, to seven tenths of a neighbor. In addition, each cell will have an uh, additional uh, feature, color. This gives us the possibility to uh, generate multiple tribes at once uh, that will uh, fight to survive. Tribes uh, will be generated using a Gaussian function for two dimensions, which is, uh, uh, which is a type of continuous probability distribution with uh, two parameters, uh, mean and uh, standard deviation. Uh, variables uh, x and y are the uh, coordinates of the cell. Here we have uh, four tribes that were generated using the Gaussian function. 
and uh, each tribe has uh, its own color. The mass of the uh, surrounding tribes determines uh, the color of the uh, newly formed cell. The tribes uh, grow bigger and try to occupy as much uh, territory as uh, it is possible. If you run the simulation long enough, you'd be left with the uh, two strongest tribes. And uh, after a very, a very, very long time, probably only one tribe uh, would remain. Newton's laws of motion uh, are the basis of classical mechanics. And the second law of uh, thermodynamics uh, states then that uh, in a closed system, uh, the entropy cannot decrease. Uh, the entropy, uh, so the uh, thermodynamic uh, state function, uh, which depends only on the uh, initial and final states of the system. It uh, satisfies uh, the equation that uh, its derivative equals the uh, derivative of heat exchange in a thermodynamical cycle uh, divided by the temperature. While the energy of the system can, in a sense, uh, be identified with energy, at the moment uh, we do not have uh, defined temperature. Therefore, uh, in order to define entropy, I will use uh, Shannon entropy, which can be interpreted as the uh, uncertainty of the occurrence of a, a given event. Uh, it is simply the expected value of the negative logarithm of the probability. To obtain the entropy for the entire system, uh, we sum the entropies uh, of all cells. To calculate the probability of a cell at a given location, or maybe rather the expected value of a given cell, I repeat the uh, simulation uh, several hundred times and then uh, calculate the average mass. Uh, calculations uh, were made for a lattice uh, 100 by 100 and a single cell with a probability of uh, 80%. The graph on the right uh, shows the probability for each cell and its change over time. Uh, the plot on the left uh, shows the entropy uh, as the uh, sum of the entropies uh, of all cells. Once uh, the cells uh, spread across the board, the entropy stabilizes. Uh, the entropy shown as a heat map uh, looks very interesting. Uh, it shows uh, how it spreads. It uh, looks like the uh, process of diffusion. At the edges, uh, yellow color indicates a higher entropy uh, than uh, the cells in the middle. Uh, this will uh, cause a small drop uh, in the entropy graph of the whole system uh, just before uh, equilibrium. As I said before, in a sense, uh, we can uh, identify mass with energy. Uh, we will uh, need both physical quantities uh, to calculate the temperature. Uh, so it is a, a good idea to show them next to each other. Uh, both uh, mass and entropy uh, come to equilibrium around uh, the hundredth cycle. However, the graphs do not uh, look identical uh, because entropy is more sensitive to approaching uh, a limit of lattice uh, by cells. Temperature is one of the fundamental uh, physical quantities in thermodynamics. Uh, it is a measure uh, of the thermal state of a given body. There are uh, many equations for the temperature, but uh, we're going to use uh, the one that was uh, given earlier for entropy. Uh, so the temperature is equal to the derivative of the energy uh, divided by the derivative of the entropy. Uh, here I used uh, two approaches to calculate the temperature. And uh, in the first one, uh, having the energy and entropy of the whole system, I can uh, numerically calculate uh, their derivatives and then uh, divide one by the other. Uh, the results are uh, shown on the slide. Of course, 
you can calculate the derivative numerically in uh, many different ways. Uh, but the simplest method is to uh, subtract the value, uh, the next value from the previous and uh, divide it by the uh, step. But uh, the obtained bias graph is uh, not encouraging. The second approach is to take the derivatives for all the cells, calculate the temperature of each cell, and then uh, sum them up. In our description of uh, the game of life, the temperature is uh, negative. Uh, this may be due to uh, creationism. Uh, the principle of uh, conservation of energy is uh, not fulfilled. In a sense, uh, cellular automata are injecting energy into the system. Of course, we can try to find another method of calculating temperature, starting with adding uh, a minus sign to the formula. Uh, due to the uh, inaccuracy of numerical operations and uh, the always insufficient number of simulations, uh, we can try to uh, average uh, the already generated results. Uh, to do this, we consider, for example, a five by five matrix and assign one value to all cells of this matrix. We repeat the process uh, for the entire system and the result of such averaging is uh, shown on the graph. One definition of life is the ability of a system to decrease entropy. In order to reduce the entropy, we introduce barriers that from a specific cycle uh, will push uh, the cells further. Uh, you can see it in the simulations properly, but uh, in fact, uh, the walls don't just kill the state of the cells, but they push them. The problem is uh, that after transferring the extra mass to the cells, uh, they die in the next cycle due to the overpopulation, or rather they reduce their mass in order to survive. Eventually, uh, the entropy drops uh, to the level we specify. We can analyze the previously uh, mentioned quantities uh, for other systems. Uh, for example, let's take a lattice uh, with uh, two barriers that uh, cells uh, cannot uh, pass through. And in each of uh, the barrier, uh, let's uh, make two small uh, holes so, uh, so that the cells can occupy the entire free surface. For such a system, uh, we should uh, get different results. On the left, we can see a fragment of the simulation that gave the opportunity uh, to uh, generate the mass map, which uh, we see on the right. Here, uh, we can observe uh, how the entropy uh, changes with time. Twice, uh, the cells uh, slowed down so much that the entropy created at the edges uh, has time to decrease uh, to such an extent uh, that the global entropy, so the entropy of the entire system, uh, also decreased. After uh, the uh, 100 and I think and 50th cycle, the entropy uh, comes to equilibrium. Finally, uh, I would like to show uh, the last plots of uh, temperature, mass, and entropy. Uh, from the 100th uh, cycle, additional uh, barriers appear and push the cells. We have two situations uh, when the temperature of several cells is positive, when the simula uh, simulation starts for a few cycles, and uh, when there are barriers on the graph that move to the right. Oh, uh, you can observe cells with, uh, with positive temperature that are close to these barriers. Now, uh, the plan for the near future. Uh, we try to add a phase to the simulations as an internal degree of freedom uh, to obtain interference uh, between cells. Uh, next, uh, we try to describe the situation on the lattice 
uh, using uh, fixed second law, which is uh, about diffusion. Then map this problem uh, to the uh, Ginzburg-Landau equation. Uh, alternatively, uh, find the uh, Hamiltonian of the entire system. Uh, I've been uh, talking longer than I expected, so I just mentioned that in order to run all the simulations, I implemented the game of life as an application, which is uh, shown here. In summary, uh, the concept of temperature is working in a uh, similar way as in classical statistical uh, physics, but uh, because of change of sign, uh, we suggest introduction of uh, conway pomorsky kotula temperature uh, with change of sign. We have uh, identified mass as uh, effective energy and Shannon entropy as effective entropy, uh, of course, in the first approximation. We are working uh, on mapping a stochastic game of life uh, to the time-dependent Ginzburg-Landau equation. Uh, we are uh, testing the concept of thermodynamic cycle with uh, moving barriers in order to uh, change entropy. We also confirmed the second and third law of thermodynamics in stochastic uh, game of life. Here's some literature. And I would like to invite you to visit the Quantum Hardware Systems website and the Quantum Hardware Systems uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting uh, presentation. I guess there are questions. Actually, we are a bit. Behind. I have a question. Yes. If uh, we can uh, derive the properties of entropy from how the stochastic uh, game of life behaves, does this mean that by changing the rules, we can effectively program how the system handles entropy? Uh, yes, uh, I think the changing uh, the rules uh, is very powerful. Uh, we can obtain uh, very various uh, results uh, depending only on the rules. We can change uh, when uh, the cells are uh, uh, changing the, their state to alive or dead. And uh, even the entropy uh, uh, in order to change uh, uh, the entropy, we can uh, change the sum of the rules. Yes. So we can effectively program things that are physical constants by changing the parameters of simulation. Yes, but uh, of course, in uh, we don't know. Uh, which parameters uh, of uh, the simulator change to obtain uh, specific uh, parameters in physical quanti quantities. Very interesting. Thank you. Maybe more two more comments in regard to this presentation. So, um, so actually we our final aim or goal is to obtain quantized uh, game of life basically uh, so uh, and also we look forward to, to possible hardware uh, implementation of that so actually we have uh, three main directions of quantization game of life so uh, first direction was already specified since uh, in Ginzburg-Landau model, the superconducting order parameter is not changing so rapidly. And uh, Ginzburg-Landau equation can be recognized as nonlinear diffusion equation that's naturally to map, to have such mapping as suggested. However, we have two other possible scenario. One is with usage of a tight binding model. So to represent uh, Conway game of life by tight binding model known in quantum mechanics. Then we have to, 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 to use Hamiltonian with some anomalous features because we don't have a conservation mass of and energy in, in the system, but still we, we can do it and we are uh, working on that. 
And third uh, possible um, uh, direction would be uh, kind of uh, re, uh, re engineering a kind of very anomalous Schrodinger equation, which, uh, which also kind of reproduce the dynamics. So the problem is that you have a, a kind of equivalence of statistical mechanics, classical statistical physics, and, and quantum mechanics as, as in relevance to probability distribution. But there is also there is there is also the concept of uh, phase that exists in quantum mechanics, and that's that's a little bit uh, kind of tricky tricky issue. So I would say, well, so we are very much acting in direction of of quantum technologies uh, that are currently very well, widely uh, developing. So 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 our aim is to is to go into quantum games. So we we try to exercise the quantization procedure and uh, in a proper way and in general in physics when you have a classical theory and when you try to quantize it there is no universal prescription for quantization so that that's why that's why we have already like three paths of of approach but still we we are quite optimistic and also this as you can see the four tribe system four tribes that are present in in in, in this presentation gives us some kind of uh, description of a competition worldwide so we have like four nations or four cultures that compete so, so somehow so this model somehow is powerful but of course this uh, this quantum agents has no no much cognition so our our view is is a bit simplistic but i i i, I very much rely on this on this correspondence of of classical statistical physics and quantum mechanics, uh, even uncertainty relation uh, is a bit similar for both uh, systems. So, for example, mm, uh, the I mean, um, yeah. So, so, so one can refer to certain literature on this topic. So, 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 and also, our final aim is to move having the certain solutions is to go into design of hardware quantum hardware so our evolution is like from mathematics like mappings to simulation and from simulation to to hardware so that's that's our kind of uh, goal for a kind of quantum artificial intelligence something like that thank you okay. thank you i don't know if there are questions uh, actually we are a bit very <laughs> much beyond uh, the, the schedule, so uh, I'm afraid someone already has a, a, a other commitment. Uh, I have a very specific question, very specific question. Usually I do very general question, this time I have a very specific one. Uh, so uh, how you, so I agree, but how you motivate uh, the, the fact that you say that the Shannon entropy is actually a, a, the entropy of a system? So maybe I, I can try to answer. So actually, I mean, equivalence of Gibbs and Shannon entropy was somehow postulated by Shannon from certain perspective, right? So, um, so in a sense that, so uh, I mean, the problem is okay. So the, the, there's thermodynamical description of 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 reality. So actually, this thermodynamical description of reality is able to turn off many local degrees of freedom. So let, let's say when you have a movement of a car in the city, you don't need to know the mood of each driver. Uh, the, each driver has certain mood, but they, on started on they, they fulfill certain statistics of mood. So yeah, so so that's that's why we are able to to truncate so unnecessary degrees of freedom that would bring a lot of complication. So um, and also I, I can say that our work was very much motivated by the current trend to reformulate quantum mechanics. I mean, uh, despite a lot of successes in the predictions, uh, quantum mechanics has a kind of problem with ontology. So let's say uh, if you if you really uh, study deeply the statistical physics, what you can find out is is, is about trade of lack of information. Uh, 
So from very real perspective, statistical physics is, is a very phenomenological model of reality that is actually not deeply insightful from certain perspective. So, so, so one can dare to have a question to what extent uh, quantum mechanics is a fully fundamental model. So far, we can confirm that this is effective model because it is uh, going uh, in in, pre in predictions with experiment. But but uh, so, so somehow we we try to engineer quantum mechanics starting from intuition of classical statistical physics, S something like that. And then 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 the good starting point is this comic game of life. So our particular let's say uh, astonishment was that. It does fulfill thermodynamics rules from certain perspective, but even though that energy is not conserved and, and mass is not conserved, but of course there you have like a micro canonical ensemble, canonical ensemble, grand canonical ensemble. So actually, if you have a subsystem based in a bigger system, those quantities might not be preserved because you have exchange of mass and energy. So 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 that's yeah. So well, uh, we'll see. We will try to uh, be able to. We will try to get interference patterns in uh, with uh, Conway Game of Life, stochastic Conway Game of Life. So far, we are not successful, but we have ideas how to be a kind of more successful. So then, uh, then it would be a very powerful concept if you if you are able to get <laughs> quantum mechanical behavior from stochastic Game of Life. That would be a lo lovely thing, you know. Be really nice. Yes. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Darius, for your uh, presentation. Thank you, Christoph, for your integration and your comments. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and uh, see you next week. Bye.